Well, they're saying Obama is an idiot and Putin's made him look like a fool in the news. I have studied uh, modern history, ancient history. I've studied the current players as much as I can. And, and I would say I'm still just moderately informed because the world is such a deep, complex political system. But I know this. The West has been funding radical Islamists to destabilize the Middle East and also be blowback in the West so they can take more liberties in the name of fighting jihad terror. And I know that Certainly George Soros brags that he helped destabilize Ukraine. I know both sides have beefs. Western Ukrainians have been persecuted by the Russians. The Russians have been persecuted during World War II, back from the Nazis. So nobody's perfect in all this. And I wanted to get Joel Skousen on because, you know, he's a former uh, Marine Corps officer, uh, fighter bomber pilot, Vietnam, so he can speak to the bombing raids. Uh, he has World Affairs Brief that's really accurate long term, predicting different developments. He's also one of the top strategic uh, retreat builders in the country. Uh, I made a film with him, Strategic Relocation, the film that goes with his full-color book that has just some of the most accurate global information about safest countries, regions. We sell it, InfoWarsStore.com. But he differs a bit. I mean, he talks about the three power groups, the Anglo-American establishment, the Russians, and the Chinese. Well, I agree those are the three predator groups. Both countries are run by... Very uh, corrupt Machiavellian groups. We also agree the Anglo-American establishment dominates the New World Order. It's the main group, but it doesn't fully control the other two. But they all overlap. But the wild card is radical Islam. And it predominantly is controlled by British intelligence, Anglo-American establishment, and the Israelis, the Turks, and others. And you can see them all full court press trying to bring down Syria in the proxy war, just like they've been doing in Ukraine. So I don't see how the two aren't inexorably linked, showing that both are a Western Anglo-American offensive. Because Skousen believes that it was a staged takedown coup to make it look illegitimate so Putin had an excuse to come into Crimea. Well, he already controlled Crimea and the gas pipeline, so what is the point of that? And I'm not disagreeing with Skousen, I just don't see the preponderance of proof. I, I see some proof there. But regardless, Putin isn't trying to take my guns. Putin isn't trying to forcibly inoculate me. Putin isn't trying to put in transgender bathrooms. He's doing the opposite in Russia. So whether they've adopted, quote, conspiracy culture because it sells with the public because it's, it's accurate, or maybe they're being converted. I know he met with Schultz and Eatson a lot. I don't lionize Putin. I know Schultz and Eatson basically broke a bunch of stuff down to Putin. I know that in the whole Russian hierarchy, a lot of the shows on TV now sound like this one over there. So there's a lot of weird stuff going on. You add to that Russian airstrikes, at least 30, against al-Nusra, which they admit is quoted al-Qaeda, Syrian branch. That's Reuters today. I just read from Reuters. In the article headlined, Russian warplanes target insurgents in Syria, but not Islamic State. Well, that's the command and control. Then IS is just their field troops setting up a new country, taking part of Syria and Iraq. So there's my analysis. There's my breakdown and I want to hear Joel Skousen from his view, Chinese troops landing, tanks, helicopters, jets, at least 50 MiGs, uh, more tanks, more helicopters. Is Russia being sucked into a new Afghanistan? McCain seemed very pleased. He said, this is a new Afghanistan. We'll give them missiles now to shoot down the Russian aircraft. Uh, is, it a, is it a failure by Obama or is it a globalist triumph? What is the larger plan that could bring in a one-world government out of this? Kissinger claims it's a disaster and is now criticizing Obama. Is that uh, a front? Or what do you think's behind that? I mean, I know I've thrown out 30 or 40 things here, Joel. This is incredibly complex. So I hope you can give us some perspective here, uh, hopefully, uh, so that we can try to decipher what's going on. Well, thanks, Alex. It is really complex. Um, let me just try to say in general, the, the uh, important thing for people to realize is that Syria has been the target of the Anglo-American globalists for about three years now, ever since Israel said, look, you guys want us to attack Iran, take down their nuclear program and start a Middle East war. We don't want to do that until you take down Syria, because Syria's got all these missiles and chemical weapons. They could obliterate uh, Tel Aviv and overwhelm our Iron Dome system. So the U.S. agreed to that, and that's why they started this no-fly zone proposal, as in Libya, for Syria, 
And you know that that no-fly zone meant much more than just a no-fly zone. It actually was an offensive that went through uh, to take down the Libyan uh, military and, and infrastructure to make sure they lost the war. That's what they're going to do in Syria. And then uh, Kerry made that faux pas there in the London press conference, given when the reporter asked, is there any way that Syria can avoid this? And he said, yeah, they could give up their chemical weapons. And Syria said, we accept. And the Russians said, we accept. And all of a sudden, the globalist agenda to take down Syria was put on its back. Now, that's why the U.S. and British intelligence created ISIS. They basically took about half the Syrian rebels that they'd been funding through Qatar and Saudi Arabia and Bahrain. And they said, you're going to be ISIS now. They set up training camps in Jordan. They put Israeli special uh, Arab agents in to direct them. And so started this phony war on ISIS, basically a backdoor excuse to get back into Syria because the chemical weapons agreement with Syria prohibited U.S. or at least stopped them diplomatically from going forward. So ISIS now gave them a new excuse to get back. And, you know, Russia had to know that this was a uh, U.S.-British intelligence coup to create ISIS as an excuse. But it's interesting that Russia did not blow the whistle on that. They still are playing the terrorist card, just like the U.S. did, because that eventually gives them... um, reasons to go forward against the war on terror, and plus the fact that probably the Americans would not accept the fact that if the Russians came out and said this was the U.S.-British intelligence creation, ISIS. Though you know, Putin, in his main statements, you're right, Joel, plays the whole terror card, but in statements last year at the Olympics and then in his new U.N. speech, which we have an accurate translation of, he did go further towards that. He actually said in the uh, speech at the Olympics a year ago, he, he said... Uh, Obama has armed uh, ISIS, and they're behind ISIS. Well, I wasn't aware of that, but that is strange. You notice that the media didn't, of course, give any play to that. Um, If they had, I doubt that, uh, you know, the Americans probably would have believed it coming from Russia. Uh, You know, they're starting to believe it coming from you and me and other credible sources on the Internet. documenting that this is a U.S.-British intelligence creation. What does this new escalation um, mean? Because I know I interrupted you and broke your train of thought, but what does this new big escalation by the Russians and the Chinese and the Iranians mean? Are they walking into a trap? No, they're not walking into a trap. In fact, this is a major game changer for the globalist agenda in Syria. It stops it dead in its tracks for a couple of reasons. One, Putin suddenly has the high ground of leadership here. He's going to show that Obama's war on terror was a fraud. He's going to show that real effective airstrikes are going to take down ISIS. But you can't take down ISIS without ground troops. Now, that would be a trap for Russia. They don't want to get involved in another Afghanistan. Uh, I have to laugh at John McCain, the the extreme uh, neocon, trying to say we're going to treat Russia's interference here as if it's the same interference in Afghanistan. It is not. But the ground troops are going to be provided by, not by Chinese. In fact, uh, you know, the stories about a lot of Chinese equipment uh, coming in really have not been confirmed yet. Uh, What has been confirmed is the presence of Revolutionary Guards from Iran and Hezbollah troops. They're going to be the shock troops. Russia's going to provide the air power, and I think they're going to go and take down ISIS. Now, this is going to be a major game changer because if Syria doesn't get taken down, That means that the entire uh, agenda of taking down Iran, and as I've explained in your show before, this nuclear agreement with Iran is just a fraud. It's just a setup, uh, including many elements that guarantee that Iran will eventually have to violate that agreement and give the excuse to go uh, for the U.S. to go back and attack Iran using Israel. But this puts that whole timetable into limbo. And uh, I think this is a real defeat for globalists. It shows that Russia has the capability of, um, you know, stopping it if, uh, without a lot of uh, cost to itself. I'm surprised they didn't do it earlier. I just marvel at this. So, that in your view, and I agree with you, Putin is completely gaming Obama, and so it's really unprecedented to have these op-ed pieces written by Henry Kissinger criticizing Obama. When Obama was first elected, Kissinger took to CNBC to say, he's my protege, he's the greatest weapon we've ever had for the New World Order, 
He's going to bring in the new world order. I mean, they acted like he was the golden child, uh, the messiah of world government. And, and now what does it signify to have Kissinger dissing himself from Obama? Well, what it signifies is that, uh, you know, he's frustrated. He's realizing and admitting that the globalists are stymied. Now, remember, this is not Obama's plan. Obama is not the genius behind uh, the New World Order. Sure, he's the figurehead, though. He's the figurehead. He's the front man. But believe me, I mean, the Russians have let the U.S. get away with this globalist agenda here in Syria now for many years. And suddenly, I think they were caught completely off guard. They didn't think the Russians were going to do this. They put up a lot of hype about how they're going to make things worse, uh, how there's going to be military conflict. And now what the Russians are doing in attacking al-Nusra, as well as other uh, you know, rebel groups friendly, supposedly, to the U.S. agenda, they're going to force the U.S. to say, all right, we're going to have to coordinate, meaning we want to control where you strike. And Russia's not going to go along with that. I think Russia is taking direct uh, uh, coordination from the Syrians to say, these are the targets that are the greatest danger to us. We need you to go after those. The Russians are doing it. And I don't think the U.S. is going to be able to stop it. They really don't have any power at all to say to the Russians, you don't have any right here. In fact, the Russian uh, Lavrov foreign minister made the point that the U.S. intervention in uh, uh, Syria is not authorized by any Security Council or U.N. agreement and that the Russians is because they've got the permission of the head of state. And uh, Putin made a great point in his speech that we need to reestablish governments here to stop all these refugees from leaving. We need order here. And we're intent on providing order, and you should be providing order in Libya. So he's taken the, the leadership high ground here, to be sure. How, this is stunning. What are the larger ramifications? What are the ripple effects of this, in your view, Joel Skousen of World Affairs Brief? The, the larger ramifications is the globalists have to regroup, and I suspect they're going to use Israel uh, it, there are rumors coming out of Israel now that they're planning an attack on Syria. This could be a game changer for Israel to go in and start to destabilize on another front. Uh, and I'm not sure the Russians want to tangle with the, uh, the, the Israelis. They would certainly have to uh, get a higher class of air force in there to, to take on the, uh, the Israelis. Sure, but this is starting to sound like uh, revelations here. Well, certainly it may be a little early for that apocalyptic ending, but I can tell you that the globalists are right now meeting as we speak and trying to figure out how do we stop this. Uh, you know, this this stymies our entire agenda here. Uh, but don't the, the Russians seem particularly historically slow to move, but once they move, they usually don't back down easily? I, I mean, could Israel bite off more than they can chew and not have the American people support when they see Russia taking out al-Qaeda? Yes, if Russia certainly is able to really start to take out this terrorist, I mean, literally, they're going to be put in the hero category. Now, I'm not a fan of Russia. I know that eventually they're attempting to strike the West, but I can't help but clap my hands in glee that they're thwarting the globalist agenda. And I'm surprised they didn't do this earlier. Um, they are very cautious because at the same time that they're building up a great deal of weapons of mass destruction preparing for World War III, They've decided to throw a monkey wrench in the globalist agenda in the Middle East. And may I remind you, I have always long maintained that Russia would not stop Syria from take, being taken down if the globals really went after it. But I was, I was wrong. They have here. But only because they decided it would not lead to a direct confrontation militarily with the West. They know that the West is in a bad position, having created a terrorist group. And they're, they're stuck. They can't really come out and defend ISIS. They've got to let Russia have their way. So it's kind of a different game. It's and not really... The I agree. Game. Let's give credit where credit's due. And I don't like giving myself this credit or you the credit, Joel, or Colonel Schaefer uh, the credit and a handful of other folks. In the last five years with Libya and now Syria, we've laid out exactly what was happening, exactly what happened at Benghazi. I've had major whistleblowers on. I've now confirmed again yesterday that... I mean, I've directly proven it now uh, that the feds are crawling all over me because and, and, I, and I was told it's because of Benghazi. I now know what it is. And it's the fact that we are actively exposing this. The military already knew this, but it gave them a sounding board three years ago, two and a half years ago. Thousands of non-commissioned officers, some commissioned officers put out uh, the pieces of paper 
on Twitter and Facebook saying, I won't be the Air Force for Al-Qaeda in, in Syria. Uh, we know that 